All right, so for part two of our trilogy, uh, The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, let's talk about um, information. What are the mechanics of information? First of all, photography is a medium that has literally changed the world and the way people think about uh, art and the reproduction of reality and information. Um, before photography is invented in the late 1830s, newspaper has articles which everyone understands are written by a human being who may or may not be telling you the truth. And they're illustrated by um, illustrators, people who draw the scenes or painters, uh, who again are understood to be subjective artists. And suddenly this invention arrives that is capable of uh, reproducing uh, faithfully whatever you put in front of the machine. This may seem obvious to you now, of course it is, we have been living with this for uh, soon 200 years, but this was mind-blowing to people and it really changed the relationship between uh, man and the world and especially uh, w the way we accepted media and information as truth. Uh, the first um, nickname for the daguerreotype, which was a, a very early photographic process, uh, was the magic mirror. Like, to people of the time, of the 1840s or 50s, this was literally magic, that they could walk into a studio and pose for a photographer, and then walk home with a magic mirror, which with an image of themselves as faithful as the one from a mirror. But yet, unlike the image of a mirror that disappears when you turn away and walk away, it would magically stay and be captured in a tangible manner and forever. So photography has uh, in its DNA the capture of information and this uncanny power of capturing exact information. Photography has been used throughout its history to reproduce documents, to reproduce art. Uh, when you open any art book, you will, you will not see the painting in it. You will see a photograph of the painting. And um, without getting too postmodern, this, like, this acceptance, this like psychological equivalent that we make between a photograph and the object that's represented is an extremely powerful thing and uh, is really like uh, stunning in a way that no other art form uh, has that sort of power, this magic of being accepted as the truth. Um, as photography progressed uh, from the daguerreotypes to like paper negatives and uh, film negatives and now digital, the technical ability of photography to capture detail and to capture reality has been um, progressing exponentially to the point that uh, even 50 years ago or even in the early 20th century the camera was capture capable of capturing so much more than what the human eye can see. Um, let's look at this picture from the early 80s from Paul Graham uh, probably um, exposed in a 60th of a second but in that blink of an eye, in that fraction of a second, the camera has captured detail all over this room that if you had been an observer standing in this room, it would have probably taken you five or six minutes to just gaze intensely at the entirety of the room to try to memorize every detail that's in it. Just counting the people sitting would have taken you a second or two. In a sixtieth of a second, the camera here got everything. The foreground, the background, the colors, the number of people, probably the text on the newspaper is readable. Like the amount of information captured is outstanding and astonishing. So obviously because this power exists and is so easy to yield, we all understand instinctively that the camera has this power of recording and then later uh, playing back information. In case I haven't been going on about this for long enough already, let me uh, read you a quote from Lee Friedlander as uh, quoted in Stephen Shaw's book, Modern Instances. I wanted Uncle Vern standing by his new car on a clear day. I got him and the car. I also got a bit of Aunt Mary's laundry and Bojack the dog peeing on the fence and a row of potted tuberous begonias on the porch, and 78 trees, and a million peebles in the driveway, and more. It's a generous medium, photography. So what he means by that is that he wanted to take a picture of his uncle, a simple portrait, but literally millions of other objects, and uh, a ton of information just snuck into his frame, 
because he was just carefully composing his uncle and the middle ground, the background, everything else ended up being readable in the final print too. Uh, so he jokes that photography is a generous medium. Um, and I think, yeah, now we are like firmly into this uh, second chapter and you're beginning to understand what I mean by the information power of a photograph. So what are the mechanics of uh, information? How do you uh, capture the largest amount of information in your photograph? These are pretty obvious and uh, you probably instinctively know all of that stuff, but uh, I find it's useful to sometimes sit down and make lists. So what do we have? Obviously, uh, proper exposure. A picture that is uh, too dark or too bright will lose detail, aka will lose information in some areas. Um, proper focus. Uh, you want the main subject, the main the main information in your frame to be in the clearest possible focus. Um, corollary to that, uh, depth of field. Uh, obviously, uh, a very deep depth of field uh, gives you readable information from foreground to distant background, as opposed to a very narrow uh, depth of field would uh, hide. A lot of information in the blurry areas. Um, color. Color is uh, obviously a more informative uh, process than black and white because uh, the world that you are trying to reproduce and communicate about is generally in color so that information needs to be carried too so a color photograph is uh, more informative. Then there's uh, a general um, organization of uh, elements in your frame. If something in the middle ground or background is hidden by something else that's in the foreground, you are losing information there too. So uh, a subject to ground relationship as it's called and the general organization in your composition uh, leads to better uh, transmission of information. Uh, obviously a wide-angle picture uh, taken from the same venture point will contain more information than uh, a picture taken with a telephoto lens. The wider your field of view, the more information you include. That's also, of course, something to uh, consider. Um, another thing is uh, the use of extreme lenses. Um, something like a 14 millimeter lens, uh, I see it all the time in real estate pictures, is uh, so wide that it gives um, a distorted uh, impression of the the room you photograph and the relationship of scale within that room. So this is also something that uh, I said earlier, wide angles would deliver more information, but there is a point of diminishing returns where they um, exaggerate the perspective so much that they start not being faithful reproductions of reality. Uh, same could be said about long lenses, uh, especially when you use a foreground and a background and a long lens will um, bring foreground and background so close that you start to um, change the way those distances are perceived and you start to make it look like two objects are much closer in the perception of your photograph than they are in reality. So you are there is also a point of diminishing return there. Another point, uh, uh, maybe a bit more abstract, but uh, it's the notion of timing. Um, Q, Cartier-Bresson and the decisive moment. Uh, a picture is most informative if it's taken at the right time. Uh, there's billions of examples of pictures that if they had been taken two seconds later or earlier, just simply do not contain all the information that the scene can deliver. So timing is a part of it too. Another way uh, to trans transmit information um, through photography is through the use of uh, subtext and our common uh, background and uh, culture and understanding of signs. Uh, for example, uh, photographers can very subtly uh, telegraph how they feel about a scene by uh, introducing some figures and compositions that are uh, taken from our common art history. Uh, for example, this very famous uh, picture that won the World Press photo. Uh, it's, it's very obvious that by um, borrowing uh, this uh, motif of uh, religious art, uh, the photographer tells us that he considers these peoples as martyrs. So this is uh, 
at the mastery level of your uh, medium when you uh, start to be able to uh, utilize your culture and a set of signs and motives that we all react to um, to convey more information and to convey subtext. So information is not just the context and the clean reproduction, it's also uh, however subtext you manage to infuse your image with. And finally, to get into something a bit more subjective, um, the maximum information power of photography is reached when as a, an artist, as a camera operator, you do not shy away from uh, subjects that are not uh, the most aesthetically pleasing or the most emotional. Uh, Stephen Shore is a great example of that. Um, nowadays, the, his pictures have uh, acquired a great emotional um, quality because the world has moved on and uh, those cars, those buildings, a lot of elements in his pictures are uh, considered as vintage and maybe desirable, definitely uh, have some nostalgia connected to them and the pictures, the prints themselves have, have acquired patina. So this has introduced an emotional charge to pictures that were, when they were made, extremely documentary, radically documentary. When Stephen Shaw went out and took pictures of parking lots, um, the easiest way to picture how radical and how purely informational those pictures were is to try to go out and take the same pictures today. Um, if you are uh, a fan of Stephen Shore and you were to try to go out and reproduce the kind of pictures that he made, you would probably hate your own pictures because the, all the emotional charge that these pictures have acquired over decades would be completely missing from brand new pictures that you took today using his same recipes. So that's the point, uh, to be uh, the most informational that photography can be, uh, you, have to, you have to try to reject uh, aesthetic and uh, emotional um, tendencies in your work and try to uh, have a fair, uh, some would say democratic approach to every subject. All right, I think that's all I got for uh, information in photography and the mechanics of it. Um, I will talk to you very soon about our uh, final chapter, which is uh, emotion.